Hey everyone, welcome back to another vinyasa practice. This class is intended to be really playful and fun as we challenge our balance using asanas that you might already know and some asanas that may feel a little bit more new. And there are going to be three ways that we're going to challenge and play with our balance today. The first is reducing the amount of contact that we have on the ground. The second is using our drishti, our focal point, or the lack of it. And the third is taking our limbs away from our midline, the center of gravity. This practice is going to be a mixture between lower body and upper body. And yeah, let's get ready to go. Let's start on our backs. If you did have a block, feel free to bring it in, but absolutely no stress if not. Let's roll ourselves down and just for a moment, take the feet wide and draw the knees towards each other. You might have your hands down by your sides or you might have one hand on the belly, one hand on the heart. Taking a deep breath in through the nose, filling up the belly, the ribs and the chest. Exhale out through the mouth, side out. Breathe in through the nose. Let's try that one more time. Big breath out through the mouth. Let it go. And then just coming back through center. Closing down the eyes and feeling the breath push up into both hands if you do have your hands on your body. And for me personally, having fun and exploring and playing comes from letting go of expectations, letting go of any desire for results or outcomes. And within our uh, yoga practice, this is known as vaidagya, non-attachment. So how can we practice non-attachment today? How does that feel for you? How does it resonate in your body? How does it resonate with what's going on in your mind at the moment, in your heart? And when we are not attached to anything, it means we are free. We are free from any things that can hold us down because things might happen or they may not. And Vaidagya means that we can have the ability, have the opportunity to find joy no matter what happens. Find peace, whatever happens. Before we begin to move, let's take about five more breaths, really trying to settle our awareness into the present moment. Let's all take one more breath. Left leg out long, right knee pulls into the chest. Take the hands around the front of the knee or the shin. And you can stay here or you can draw the nose up in the direction of your knee. Maybe even wrapping forearms, wrapping the elbows around to squeeze the knee in a little bit more. Bring the head back down to the ground. Take a deep breath in. As we exhale, let's twist the right knee over to the left. Drawing the right shoulder in the direction of the ground. Maybe even looking down the right arm. 
Coming back through center, let's swap it out. We are doing a little bit of twisting today. One of my favorite positions at the moment, asanas, is the Parivrita Trikonasana, Twisted Triangle. So we will be doing that. Maybe you lift the nose up in the direction of the knee. Maybe the elbows walk down a little bit more. Can you really try to squeeze the thigh into the chest? Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, lower the head down to the ground. And start to twist the left knee over to the right. Maybe reaching the left hand out, dropping the left shoulder down, big twist through the spine. Come back through center, plant the hands down by your sides, walk your feet in close to your hips, and then push through your heels, engage the glutes, and lift your chest, your chest, your hips off the ground. Now feel free to stay here, or shift your weight into your left foot, pick your right knee up, finding a 92 degree angle with your knee. Really push down with your palms, with your forearms here. That's going to help with your balance. We're going to take big circles with our right knee. So taking it wide. Actually, we might start a little bit smaller to begin with. So taking it wide and then around and then back through center. And we're trying to find hip stability here. So as we take the right knee wide, we want to prevent the right hip from dropping. So really engage through the left glute. And if you felt like a little bit more, you can do this with your right leg long. So you want to think right leg circling around on your inhale and then exhaling to lift the leg back up. Let's go about three more. So really pushing through the right arm here. And then we stop it out. Right foot comes down, left knee picks up to begin with. I find this movement so challenging, not just for the legs, but for the upper body as well. Really engage the right glute here. Breathe in as you take your left knee wide. Exhale as you draw it back through center big circles or little circles, trying to not let that left, that right shoulder come off the ground. And if you felt like a little bit more left toes can lift up, taking it around. Can you notice your right knee here, making sure that it stays on top of the ankle as we move? Let's go two more. And then lower the hips down to the ground, bend into the knees, and then rock yourself up into Navasana Boat Pose. So chest is lifted, turn the palms up, your knees might be bent here, they might be a little bit longer. Take a deep breath in. As we exhale, find your way into low boat. So lower back pressing, pressing down into the ground. From this position, we're gonna try roll onto our right glute. So turn yourself over to one side. You can always bend your knees here or have the right hand down for support. I'm already shaking. And if you felt like more for uh, any reason, <laughs> you can reach your arms above your head. Come back through center, breathe in. As we exhale, let's roll over to the left. Keep the chest picking up. For me, I am so happy with my hands in. This is really challenging for the obliques in the front of the core. Keep the ribs tucking in. Try not to arch through the lower back. Come back through center. Take a deep breath in. As we exhale, come back into Navasana. Maybe knees bent, maybe knees longer. One more breath. So good. Cross over the legs. Nice job, everyone. Plant the hands down. And then step back into a downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Deep breath in through the nose. Exhale through the nose as you push your hips back, pressing through the hands. And just for the moment, come down to your knees, find your tabletop position. Spread the fingertips wide and then start to roll out the wrists a little bit. So circling your shoulders in one direction. 
and then circling in the other direction. So like I said at the beginning, we will be playing with a little bit of upper body balance today as well. So we just wanna make sure that the wrists are ready for some weight bearing. Come back through center, just flip the back of the hands so that the palms are facing up, the fingertips are pointing back and then leaning forward and back. And then maybe we flip the hand the other way. So the back of the palms on the ground, you can always turn the fingertips a little bit wider. Maybe it's one hand, maybe it's two hands, shifting forward and back. And then come back through center, plant the hands down. Let's tuck onto the toes, lift the hips up again, back into downward facing dog. We're gonna begin a new sequence here. Breathe in, sweep the right toes high, three-legged dog. Hold here for your exhale. Really try to square the hips, right hip in line with left. Soft knee bend in your left knee. Now you can stay here or while keeping your hips and shoulders really square, see if you can take your right leg as wide as possible until it's kind of in line with your hip. So you should feel the right glute engage to support the leg out. And if you felt like a little bit more, maybe the left hand reaches to the left as well. So you just got your right hand and your left leg on the ground. Definitely helpful if you can get the left heel on the ground, but there's absolutely no pressure for this to happen. Okay, left hand plants back down, lift the right toes again, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, roll forward, right knee to nose. Set the right foot in between the hands, lower the left knee down, Anjaneyasana, breathe in, lift the arms. Exhale, hold. Start to take a little twist to the right. Your right hand is gonna to come towards the back of the left thigh. Take another deep breath in as you reach your left hand a little higher. As you exhale, can you twist a little bit deeper? So draw the right shoulder back, the left shoulder forward. Lengthen your right leg, but keep the twist in the spine. Breathe in, left fingertips come to the ground or to a block if you had one available. Exhale, right hand up. Parivrita. Ada Hanumanasana. Okay, so soft bend or big bend in the right leg here. I gaze towards your right thumb. Now you can stay here. Maybe you're still on your left fingertips. If you felt like a little bit more, shift forward, tuck onto the back toes, lift your back knee off. So you're in a variation of your twisted triangle here, just with the back heel off the ground. Now, if you felt like a little bit more, see if you can keep the twist, but lift the left hand off the ground. So you're engaging through the core to wrap the chest around, squeezing the shoulder blades down the spine. And if you still felt like a little bit more balance, see if you can turn your eye gaze back up to your thumb or somewhere close to it. One more breath. Warrior two, breathe and open to the left side, arms wide, exhale to hold, sink into your hips, right knee pressing forward, Drop the shoulders away from the ears. See if you can squeeze your hands into fists and roll out the wrists. If you felt like a little bit more, right heel could come off, on the, off the ground, so coming onto your right toes. If you felt like more, see if you can close down the eyes. So trying to find our internal system of balance. Let's go one more breath. And then land the hands, open the eyes. Breathe in, frame out your front foot. As you exhale, step back into plank, but hover the right foot off the ground. Breathe in to hold. As you exhale, right knee to the nose, tuck it in. And then step your right knee halfway off, up the mat, right toes are lifted. Lift up your left foot as well, engage the left glute. Breathe in, chin and chest to the ground, tuck the elbows in. As you exhale, come back up. Let's do that two more times. Breathe in, tuck it down. Exhale, lift. Inhale, tuck. Exhale, lift. Hold here. Can you squeeze your right foot into your glutes a little bit more? If this feels quite uncomfortable for your right knee, maybe you bring a pillow under it or you can fold your mat in half. You can stay here or right hand could reach forward. 
So you're kind of coming into this extended tabletop position with the left hand and the right knee on the ground. Whew, I'm falling all over the place. Now, if you did feel like a little bit more, see if you can reach your left hand to the left corner, right hand to the right corner. I don't think I've ever wobbled so much in my life. <laughs> and then come back through center, place the right hand down, tuck left toes, set the right foot back, plank position, breathe into shift forward, exhale, shut that I'm gonna come down onto the belly. Inhale to Cobra. As you exhale, let's come to Downward Facing Dog. Lifting hips up and back. Pressing through hands, softening the knees, lifting the hips. Breathe in, sweep the left toes high, three-legged dog. As we exhale, hold here or take your left foot to the left side, providing you have space. Keeping the hips and shoulders really squared to the mat. Engaging the left side glute, the glute medius, to support the leg up. Maybe you stay here. Maybe the right hand reaches to the right. Shoulders squeezing up the spine. And then placing the right hand down. Breathe in, sweep the left toes high again. As you exhale, roll forward, left knee to nose. Set the left foot in between the hands, lower the right knee down to the ground. Anjaneyasana, breathe in, lift the arms. Exhale, hold. Sink the hips forward and then take a little twist to the left. Left hand reaches around to the right thigh. You can always walk it back a bit more if you want. Breathe in, open the chest. Exhale, draw the left shoulder back, right shoulder forward. Keep the twist in the spine, breathe in. Start to lengthen the left leg, hips push back. Exhale, right fingertips reach to the ground. Left fingertips reach high. You can always have your hand on a block here. Turning your eye gaze towards your left thumb if that feels available to you. If you felt like a little bit more, tuck right toes. Lift the right knee off the ground. Twisted pyramid, twisted triangle variation. And if you felt like a little bit more, Right hand can come off the ground. So my left toes are down here. Whole of the left foot is on the ground. Keep trying to spin the chest open to the left. Squeeze the shoulder blades down. And remember, you can use your drishti, your focal point, to challenge your balance here. Looking up towards the left thumb. Okay, warrior two. Breathe in, open to the right. Right heel plants down. Left toes face forward. Exhale, hold. Clasp your hands into the fists, roll out the wrists, engaging through the quadriceps. Maybe your left heel picks up here. And if you felt like a little bit more, see if you can close down your eyes. Warrior two tends to be a little bit more balanced here. So this is a great way to warm up our, our internal balance with the eyes shut. Okay. If you've got your eyes closed, open them up again. Hands come down to the ground. Breathe in, step back into plank. Hover the left foot off the ground. Exhale, hold. Take another deep breath in. As you exhale, left knee to the nose. Step the left knee halfway up the mat. Lift your right toes. Left toes are also off the ground here. Chin and chest to the ground, tuck the elbows in, lift the right toes, breathe in. As you exhale, come back up. Inhale, chin and chest. Exhale, back up. One more, chin and chest. Exhale, come back up, hold here. So, staying on the left knee, of course you can always bring the left foot down. If you felt like a little bit more, see if your left hand can reach forward. So really try to spread the right fingertips wide here because you're doing a lot of stabilizing with your right fingertips, your palm, and you want to grip the fingertips into the ground. And if you felt like a little bit more, see if you can take your hand and the leg on the diagonal. Engaging through the core, squeezing the glutes a little bit. And then left hand comes down. Tuck onto right toes. Breathe in as you step your left foot back into a plank. Exhale, Shatbaranga. 
Inhale to push up. Your back bend of choice. Exhale, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Walk your hands back to your feet. Come into Uttanasana forward fold. Tucking the chin into the chest, letting the back become heavy here. And then walking your feet out into Malasana, turning the toes, sinking your hips down, pressing hands together, squeezing elbows into the knees. So we're going to play with our crow pose here. Now for those who are just starting out on crow pose, I'll guide you in. For those who are pretty confident in their practice, I encourage you to try this with your eyes shut, even if it's just for a couple of seconds, but really playing with that internal sense of balance and holding. Okay, you're going to lift your hips up high. Hands come down, keep the, uh, the fingers spread out, elbows tuck back, knees come onto the back of the elbows. You want to keep shifting your weight forward until you create a little shelf for your knees to kind of meet the back of the arm. And then maybe the feet lift up. So you're just stacking joints here. Eye gaze underneath the head. So you're not looking behind you and if you wanted to try, you could close your eyes for a moment. I'm going to hold here for a little bit. You can always come in, come out as much as you need. And then when you're ready, just coming out. Ooh, really nice. Shake it out. Playing with our eye gaze can be a really fun way to change up our practice. If we've been practicing asana for a few years and we felt like something a little bit new, closing the eyes or changing the direction of our gaze can really shift things up. Okay, come back into downward facing dog. So walk your hands out, walk your feet back. Breathe in as you walk your feet up to the top of the mat. As you exhale, let's fold forward Uttanasana. Let's lift halfway, hands come to the shins, breathe in. Exhale, fold. Lift all the way up, take a deep breath in. Arms over head, exhale, hands by the sides, Tadasana. Okay, we've got one more sequence. A little bit of upper body, a little bit of lower body. We're going to start by shifting our weight into our left foot to practice some shrimp squats. Now just have a watch here. So you're going to bend your left knee and then we're aiming to get the right knee down on the ground with the foot up. Now this is very challenging, especially as you come up to keep the right foot off the ground. So as you need to, or if you need to, you can touch right foot first and then right knee and then come up like that. If you felt, see if you can, if you're kind of in an in-between stage, see if you can touch down with just the right knee. And then if you need to, just kind of use a little kick to come up. Anyway, we're going to try it together about three times. So breathe and lift up tall. Exhale, bend to the left knee, tap the right knee down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, tap down. Inhale, come up. Exhale, tap down. This time, stay at the bottom. Tuck onto right toes. A little bit of an interesting transition here. Lift the right knee. Turn to the right Malasana Garland pose. So you're facing the right side of the mat and you're nearer to the, nearest to the front. So from here, you can practice crow pose again. Or you can practice what's called lateral gorilla walks, lateral ape walks. This is a movement found in animal flow. So what you do, you're going to lift your hips up a little bit. Hands are going to come out. So you can kind of think opposite hand in front of the opposite foot. You're going to place it down one, two. Just going to make sure I have enough space. One, two. And then you're going to lift up one, two. Okay. So one, two. Lift up. One, two. So you might start a little bit closer to the ground and just have the feet just off. 
but as you become a little bit more proficient and want to challenge your balance and strength a bit more you want to see if you can lift your hips up a little bit higher onto your shoulders let's just try this a couple of times we do have time on the other side to practice this as well and sometimes it's difficult to know what foot what hand to go so it's outside hand and foot and then you land the inside so hand hand foot foot land hand hand foot, foot. okay we're going to make our way to malasana at the top of the mat again facing the side from here turn back to the front standing split so left toes down right toes high Fingertips are on the ground. A couple of ways that you can spice this up. Right hand could come behind the left calf to help pull your chest down a little bit more. If you wanted to play with balance, see if you can lift both hands off the ground. Maybe you even sweep them down by your side. Let's go one more breath. Squeeze shoulder blades down. Engage the back of the right leg. Take a long step back with the right foot, about a meter or maybe a little bit more. Breathe in, lift the hands up. Both legs are long here. And then as you exhale, left hand comes around the back of the right thigh, just like we did before. Use your next breath in, twisted triangle. Right hand could come onto the inside of the left leg. You could take it to the outside of the left leg. If you've got a block here, you can also use that. I really like to have my hand down on the outside, lift my left hand up, and then see if I can bring my left, my eye gaze to the left thumb. Okay, we're gonna flow through those two movements two more times. Breathe into lift. Exhale to reverse, hand down the thigh. Inhale. Parivrita Utita Trikonasana. Exhale. One more. Breathe in and lift. Exhale if you felt like more. Hold. See if you can start to bend the right knee. Keep the left leg long. So you're kind of shifting back. And maybe your left hand walks down. For me, I'm still sticking on my thigh. But for you, you might be able to touch down to maybe your left calf. Come back into your triangle one more time. Breathe in, lift up. Exhale, twist. So your right heel might be off the ground here. It might be down. Plant the hands down to the ground. Breathe in, three-legged dog. Left toes lift up. Exhale, hold. Take your left foot to the outside just like we did before. Leg is long and maybe if you wanted to join your right hand with the left, reach it out to the side. Right hand comes back down, breathe in, three-legged dog, left knee is bent, final pose, exhale, drop the right heel down, like you're about to touch into wild thing, but you don't quite get there. So you're kind of hanging out in this in-between space. How close to the ground can you get your left toes without touching? Keep reaching your left hand to the top corner of the mat. And then touch the left hand back down. Come back into downward facing dog. If you'd like to flow through a vinyasa, you can. I won't cure it, but you're more than welcome to. Use your next breath in. Start to walk yourself forward. As we exhale, fold Uttanasana. Left halfway, breathe in. Exhale, fold. Lift the arms, breathe in. Exhale, our hands by the sides. Okay, let's try this on the other side. Shifting weight into the right foot, starting with our shrimp squats again. So breathe and lift up. As we exhale, bend your right knee, shift the weight forward, left knee, maybe your left toes come down. Inhale to lift back up. Exhale to lower. Inhale to lift. Exhale, low. This time we hold, tuck left toes, turn to the left, Malasana Garland Pose. So remember, you can hang out here where you can find your crow pose. If you want to try those, 
kind of gorilla ape walks. Make sure you have the space to do so. So you'll start right hand first. So right and then left hand. So it's a lot about coordination. And this is a really fun skill to play with if you're trying to work towards handstand because it's somewhat similar to a cartwheel. And that can be quite important when you're, if you try a handstand, but can't quite get there and have to fall out. Doing this is quite good for that. Anyway, let's come back to our Malasana at the top of the mat, turning to the left. Once we get there, turn your left knee down back to the front, standing splits, left toe sweep high. Back leg really long. Imagine someone was trying to pull it away. Maybe you stay hands on the ground. Could always bring right hand behind the leg. If you wanted to have full balance, no hands on the ground, reducing contact on the ground, maybe hands come by the sides. Really nice. Long step back with the left foot. Breathe and lift the arms. As we exhale, right hand down the left thigh, twisting the chest to the right. Breathe in, come back through center. Your variation of twisted triangle. Exhale, hold. So you're really trying to think right shoulder squeezing back, left shoulder underneath. Maybe eye gaze turns up to your right thumb. Inhale to lift. Exhale to reverse. Inhale, come back. Exhale, twist. One more, breathe and lift up. This time, if you felt like a little bit more, keep the right leg long. Make sure you don't lock out the right knee. So to bend the left knee, you're going to lean back a little bit as if the right hand was going to touch towards the left calf or the left ankle. Of course, your left hand can, your hand can still be on your left thigh. Whew. <laughs> Twisted triangle. One more time. Breathe in. Exhale. Right hand comes down, three legged dog. Breathe in, sweep the right toes high. As you exhale, take the right foot out to the side. Maybe you stay here, maybe the left hand reaches to the left. Left hand comes down, breathe in, bend the right knee. As you exhale, kind of opening into this wild thing without quite getting there. So see how far you can get your right toes to the ground without it touching. Keep reaching the right hand to the front to help counterweight, counterbalance this position. And then land the right hand down, downward facing dog. Really nice. Bring your knees down to the ground. Sweep your feet around to the side. We're coming back into Navasana, our favorite position. Okay, a couple of different options that you can chill out. If you felt like a little bit more, see if you can hug your hands behind the legs, maybe the back of the calves, maybe peace fingers come around the big toe. And then lift yourself up. Imagine like you're in a forward fold. And for me personally, you kind of need to be on the top of your sit bone. So rolling as far forward as you can before your kind of pelvis tips back. So feet up a little bit higher, knees can be bent here. The aim is to try and get the chest close to the thighs. <laughs> I find this really hard to stay in that top position. The hips keep wanting to roll back. It's a work in progress. Okay, let's go one more breath. And then release the feet. We're gonna head down onto our back. Once we get there, 
For those who still want to play with balance, I'll give you an option when we get there. For those who are wanting just to chill out a little bit more, you could find a way into maybe a waterfall with your feet up and over your hips. If you felt like shoulder stand, hands could be by your sides. You kind of rock your feet back and then lift your feet up. Hands come behind the back and you're aiming to get the ankles stacked on top of the hips, stacked on top of the shoulders. A little tuck in of the chin here. Now for those who still felt like playing a little bit, you can find an unsupported shoulder stand. So without any hands. What this looks like is that you'll come into more of a staggered position. So your feet are over the head and your hips are more forward. From here, you could lift kind of one hand up to the side of the calf, maybe the other hand to the side of the calf, and you can absolutely stay here. The more staggered you are, the easier it is to balance. And then if you wanted to challenge it a little bit more, you'll start to lift your feet up, keeping your hands lifted, pointing your toes. And you're aiming to get as high as you can, really, with your feet without using your hands on the ground for support. And then when you're ready, just starting to roll yourself down. Any final positions that you would like to finish your practice in? This is your time to shine. I might offer bridge position again, just as a little back bend. Press your feet into the ground, lift your hips up high. You might stay here or you could rock your shoulders underneath you, binding the hands together, pressing the pinky fingers down. And then slowly releasing the hands, releasing the spine, come down onto your back. Just preparing for Shavasana. Eyes closing, breath slowing. And the amazing thing about practicing balance is it gives you or it can give you so much of a sense of focus and what's going on right now because if your mind kind of floats away and you lose that sense of concentration then you tend to fall out of the position and so that makes it a lot easier to come into shavasana more clarity maybe a little bit more of a sense of presence We'll just be here for a couple more minutes. I'll let you know when it's time to transition out.
just letting your awareness slowly drift back to your mat, you and your body in your breath. Slowly start to make some movements with the fingers, with the toes. Hug the knees into the chest and we'll roll ourselves up into a seat to close out our practice together. Maybe you're finishing the hands in the lap or you can bring hands through heart center. Take a deep breath in, lift up really tall through the spine. As we exhale, maybe bowing our heads, thanking ourselves for staying here, for being here, for maybe letting go of any expectations or attachments and being fully present here. And even if we didn't quite nail it this time, just keep turning up. It's always intention. Thank you, team. I will see you on the next one. Let me know how you found this, uh, this class in the comments below if you have any requests. And I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon, whether it's here on YouTube or on Patreon where we have some longer class. Can't wait to see you next time.